Now, your book, 2041, co-author with Kai Fu Li, has been such a bestseller in the world today. But what I want to ask you is not just limited to the book, but rather about your view on uh, AI, particularly chat GPT. This is already celebrating one year. Yeah, interestingly, we share the same birthday on November the 30th. <laughs> so just one year anniversary. So it's such a coincidence, right? So after the year, we all experienced this kind of like chat GPT moment. So billions of users has this wonderful opportunity to interact with AI directly to witness its cap cap capacity of doing different things. But also it triggered a lot of anxiety and even fear towards the future full of uncertainty. People have been debating about it, certainly related to open AI, the latest incidents about the ups and downs of the earlier founder of open AI. Now, and of course, corporate governance, obviously the debate related to it. So what is your view of the latest incident? In my opinion, is like the battle between um, efficient um, accelerationism versus uh, super love enlightenment. So this, this is two different kind of, you know, attitude towards AI. So first of all, in Silicon Valley, all those big tech companies, uh, tycoons, they all believe in effective accelerationism because they try to push the limit of technology and they believe this could be like solving a lot of problems right now we're confronting. But on the other side, like uh, alignment or alignmentism is talking about how we should regulate AI to be to be aligned with the human value and current uh, ethical um, framework and not to mention legal and law enforcement, so right. to speak. So this is a huge differences on the future. How do you see these different parallels of uh, development? One is about the ethical, legal discussion. The other is about technologies itself. Meanwhile, corporate governance uh, at the same time, uh, the consumer awareness and so on. How do you see uh, these different uh, parallel passages are developing all at the same time? Are they? I think right now people see like part of the reality, right? So mm. it's not the whole picture of the reality. Of course, we're making progress on the uh, the Blantley um, uh, declaration um, um, raised by China, US, EU, like over 25 countries agreed on we have to identify the, the risk of AI development and we try to settle down uh, uh, based on local uh, law enforcement and regulation, and we have to mm -hmm. engage like internationally, like uh, from different perspective, to working together on studying and on researching these AI issues and come up with some um, universal solutions which can adapt to different mm -hmm. society. Which to me it means a lot of progress right now, but meanwhile. Of course, the big tech companies, they want to win the arm race, right? So everyone try to seize the time to train their big uh, large language model, and they try to upgrade it as, as fast as possible to occupy the market. So basically mm. in the future, there might be several, maybe even less than five large language model could dominate the market. So that's the huge mm. problem, not on the technology, but on the capitalistic uh, uh, framework right now we're holding mm. on. To. In terms of national security geopolitics, AI and AGI will be very much tapped into and taken advantage of. Now, how do you see um, this field will get into your work and will get into the development of technology, the discussion of ethics? different country, they have different understanding and different attitude towards technology development. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, China will always be open and be being positive 
on the latest development of technologies because we think it's such a tool to uplifting our efficiency and and convenience of life right so it's kind of you know we see it in the bright side but for european because they have long history of being you know critical uh thinking critically about technology and all this kind of political system so naturally then intrinsically they are being suspicious about all these new things so you can mm-hmm. see all this kind of resistance of attitude among all the society and not to mention the uh, the, the the common people so i think this is a very interesting thing to think about that even among the human beings like in different countries who are not aligned with each other so how can mm-hmm. we come up with a, a universal framework to mm-hmm. stay aligned with each other so this is a, a very reflexive question to be asked so i don't have the answer yet but i think in the future we need more people from humanity department to help us to to mm-hmm. trigger more new inspiration. So you're saying that there needs to be more discussions about the shared humanity and how that idea will infiltrate into the discussion about the future of AI, whether it's governance or technology-wise or other fields. Is that what you're trying to indicate? Yes. I mean, like, Mm. uh, in my perspective, from all the scientists, engineers, um, uh, technician people I encounter, they are holding to a very single dimension of thinking of AI, so either good or bad. Mm. But I think it, the reality is more complicated rather than that. So we need more humanity mm. perspective, like anthropologists, sociologists, historian, maybe artists, to having all this conversation because there are so many different layers within this single question, whether mm. AI will do good or bad to human beings? I think it's not a simple question. And there's a lot of a synergy taking place among all of these very different factors as we speak. Yes, again, it's mm. also a geopolitical question. And when we think about it in that way, so it become even more like brutal, even critical, because you think about it as a arm raising, as a cold war, yeah. as a narrative war maybe so in the future maybe we will be attacked by different kind of ideological narratives all Mm. generated by ai and you couldn't even tell whether it's real or not by your bare eyes Mm. so that's that could be a huge problem almost a year ago i had been talking about the language itself how it will impact and be impacted as a result of the development of AI, depending on the use of the language by the majority. Now, English, of course, was uh, very much at the very beginning, the pioneer language. Uh, At the time when last time when we spoke, Chinese was not necessarily a very common language on chat GPT, for example. Now we have seen some changes. Chinese language users going on ChatGPT, for example, they have much better results in terms of the answers they've been receiving and interacting. Uh, there are also Chinese version of uh, ChatGPT, of course, different, yet uh, you see that being developed in a cultural environment like China, like Wen Xinyi and, and some of the others. So how do you see, you know, language uh, vis-a-vis the linguistic power uh, and vis-a-vis the development of technologies that are present today uh, related to the development of chat GPT like? I ask uh, the same question to different model like OpenAI and Baidu One. So basically they get me totally different answer. So maybe the yes. opposite answer. So this is so fascinating that reminds us in the future, we are not living in the same world. We're not living in the same narratives. We are living in different kind of narrative separated by all this AI could be. And what's 
con what concerns me more is right now we try to using synthetic data to train the model because we have not enough human data uh, mm -hmm. in the foreseeable future. So that means all of this data will be generated by AI and feedback to AI to, to self train it. So that means we generate fake information from synthetic information. So this is even more worrisome to me. And that means maybe in the future, our kids, our next generation, they're living in a world uh, full of false, uh, false news and misinformation, and they don't mm -hmm. have the capability to identify which is which. So this is something I think not everyone uh, fully aware of its uh, risk yet. Do you feel we have been too much artificially trying to fragment our own societies rather than putting enough efforts to look for the common ground? AI is just like other uh, technology and media. It's amplifier. So if we ourselves were fragmented, so it basically grew up all this differentiation. So we see all these differences here and there it just becomes something bigger than it supposed to be, right? But mm, if we yeah. can use it to turn around the lens and we try to seek for the common ground, we see the humanity in common, maybe we yeah. can see a better side of humanity in mm. our society. Uh, in a time of dramatic change, at least seen by our generation, it's always wonderful to go to the history, to revisit, but at the same time to embrace life, every details of it could shine in the heart and comes here as well. Yes, feel grateful and be humble as water as always.